around my story. My life has taught me that each one of us has more than one face. And there are faces that are much worse than our nightmares. My name is Susan, and the story I will tell you needs to understand my reasons before judging me. When I was in school, I was one of the celebrities that all the kids wanted to be with, including Josh, one of the school bullies, who was obsessed with me and tried to get close to me in every way. But I could not, because I had always rejected him. But also, this was not my reality, which I hid because my family was very poor, and I was embarrassed to show them to my friends or to anyone. And at that time, I became in relationship with my friend Max. And Max was one of the boys that I could call the idiots of the school because he was very mean. And the rest of the students were surprised that I chose him. And despite this, all the students, even the bullies, including Josh, were afraid of Max and could never get close to him, which was strange. The days passed and I left Max. I left the city with my family and our financial conditions turned from bad to worse. And one day, when I was leaving the university, a young man in a very cool car stood in front of me and smiled at me without speaking before introducing himself, that he is Max, the school friend. He searched a lot until he found my address. Yes, this is strange, but the splendor of his car and the surprise of the situation made me forget everything and then we became into a relationship again. He was very rich, and his house was like palaces. I was not mainly interested in knowing the source of this money because I knew that Max's father was rich since the school days, and this is not strange. But over time, I noticed his strange behavior. I became sure of my suspicions that there was something strange when I found a large quantity of drugs in one of Max's bags. At first, I hid that, but at some point, I told him what I saw and that I knew he was a drug dealer. At that time, he was very calm and told me that each one of us has something to hide. And this was my truth. I was just a girl who had been lying that she was someone else all her life. But I couldn't bear this situation. And that's why I called the police. They came to Max's house and arrested him and his men, except for a group that managed to escape. They gave me a big financial reward because Max was one of the most dangerous wanted drug men, but I lost Max forever. Of course, it was not true love, but this does not prevent that it caused me great pain. I decided to leave all this and go back to my family, but I did not find them and received a message. My family was kidnapped by Max's men, and they asked me to come to a place on the outskirts of the city if I wanted to see them again. Everything collapsed in my mind, and I felt like I was in a nightmare, and there was no solution for me other than to listen to their words and go to that place. There, Max's men came out to me with my family in handcuffs. For a moment, I was about to cry, but I held on. Immediately, the shooting started between the police and Max's men, as I told the police what happened and they were hiding in the place. At that time, a bullet hit my brother. The gangsters were arrested while I broke down. And I met Josh again, the school bully in the past, who was then one of the policemen who arrested the gangsters. The bullet that hit my brother caused his death, and I lost one of the closest people to me. But Josh never left me after that, and I got back in this ordeal. At that time, I made sure that I was stupid when I rejected him a long time ago and chose a fake face just as I was fake too. I am Emma, 23 years old. My life seems very normal. A girl has many friends, goes out and laughs all the time. I wish my life is really normal as everyone, as I was able with the help and support of my mother to live a very normal life to a large extent. Lama and Mary are my best friends. And they are the two who know the problem that I suffer from since my childhood. Now I have been dealing with the situation simply because I get used to it, but I have been going through different periods in my life, times when I really feel that I love food and eat happily, and feel the pressure of eating, and sometimes I hate eating in a terrible way, but I cannot stop eating. 
And what happens to me when I eat while not desiring food? It is very ugly, disgusting, stressful, and also vomiting. After that, I will have to replace this food because I am hungry again, and it may happen again, and I keep repeating this. Then I reach this condition. I have to stay at home for a period of up to a whole week. Mary and Lama used to spend with me most of the time. We used to play and laugh and watch movies, and they tell me what happened in college. James was the person I liked the most to go to college to see him, even though I knew that he did not notice me at all. I kept watching him from afar and wanted to give him some of my food and share it together, but I never thought that I could take a step. Even though coincidences used to bring us together outside the university and we would meet in more than one restaurant, I would love to go with Lama and Mary and always eat there. Despite all these coincidences, he never noticed me or even caught his attention. And one day, I saw James with a girl from our university. They were very happy together. I felt very sad. And I asked Lama and Mary to take me home. And I kept crying all day until I slept while crying and even forgot to eat. And this was the first time this happened to me because this day, my mother was not at home. And when she came back, she came to check on me in my room, but she found me unconscious and called for an ambulance quickly. I woke up after three days in the hospital, and I could have died if my mother had been late for a while. I was very upset with myself that I wasted all her tiredness and effort with me over the past years because of my anger at a person who does not know that I exist in life at all. I forgot that I have a rare disease and that I can't stop eating. Otherwise, I might get a big problem that could lead to death. My mother was the only one who got my back since I was a child. I kept trying to find a cure for my illness. She was helpless and very sad the moment when I woke up. The bigger problem now is that it did not stop at the problem of craving for food, which is impossible for me to stop. I am now a patient with heart disease. I saw the doctor saying to my mother when she was broken down, and this is one of the many problems that naturally occur because of my illness. My condition now is much more difficult than before. I am prohibited from excessive movement, travel, and swimming. I am forced to eat all the time. Although food has never caused me a problem with weight, my life has become more difficult, and my mother has to take extra care of me. I feel that I've become a very big burden, and that if I died, the lives of all people around me would be easier, so I decided to take an extra dose of heart medication. My plan would have worked if my mother didn't notice that and forgotten about me even if it was half an hour. Unfortunately, she noticed that my condition was getting worse and took me to the hospital, and they rescued me at the last moment, and I had a new life. Do you think my decision to commit suicide was wrong? Or what is wrong that I continue to live and many people suffer because of me?